Hey there folks, this is Greeny XI, welcoming you right back to Let's Play Higurashi. This is episode 23, and I think in this episode we're actually going to be finishing off the arc and the series for now. We'll be coming back to this series once the other chapters come out on Steam and stuff like that. But anyway, I think we should get right on to it. If it's really short, which I can't imagine it being considering what's coming, but if it's really short, then I'll be doing something else in the extra section. If not, then I won't be, because it's nothing interesting going by the name of it. But I'll check it on the end anyway, if it's short, like I said. Let's get going! I squatted down for a bit. When I came back to my senses, my entire room had changed drastically. The numbness in my head was gone, and slowly, I could tell blood was flowing to my extremities again. How long had I been squatting here? How many minutes? Or has it been hours? It was almost as if the hands on the clock had stopped moving the entire time my eyes were closed. That's how little time passed. Really? The air in the room wasn't filled with that madness from before, only a dull silence. Venna wasn't there pinning my arms and Mia wasn't there about to inject me with a needle. No way. Could it be? All of it. Was it a hallucination? There was no other presence in the room besides my own. It was the weirdest experience I'd ever had. I was certainly with Venna and Mion. I doubted my sanity for a minute, but I was also seized with some sort of comfort. I guess that terrible ordeal was a hallucination. Neither Venna nor Mion, they wouldn't ever do something so terrible. My head grew hot. I could tell my emotions were welling up. Why? That was no reason to cry. Why? It was sorrow. Why was I sad? I don't understand. I don't understand. Kind to everyone, not discriminating against age or gender. Mion. That Mion was sprawled by the window in an unnatural pose. Blood stained her a deep red from her head down to her chest. Oh shit, what's he done? The bright crimson smeared on the walls that splattered and undoubtedly come from Mion. She always had that bright smile and was kind to me from the day I transferred. Rena. That same Rena was slumped at my feet and was making the same pool of blood as Mion. I couldn't comprehend what had happened. Did someone come to save me? Then they beat these two down. With this metal bat? I finally noticed the weight in my right hand. How long had it been there? It was Satoshi's metal bat. It was covered in a deep red. There's no doubt that this was the weapon used to mutilate both of them. I can remember the very opening to this series, to this arc, where, you know, Kaiji was going a bit mental, and you could hear the sound of a bat whacking. This is coming full circle now, so it's coming to the end. And I was holding that weapon. I was the only person in the house. What? I... Looking at this objectively, I can't think of anyone other than myself who could have done it. I did this? That's right. Kaichi Mayabara. Of course I did it. I told myself gently, as if coaxing myself. Hey, me. There is no reason for you to remember it, nor is there a need to regret it. Eat or be eaten. You get that, don't you? But the blood. The blood. There's so much. Neither Rena nor Mion had moved an inch. It wasn't just a split forehead and a trickle of blood. Nothing that simple. The entire room was splattered with red, and that told me it didn't end with just two or three strikes. Were they dead? Both of them? The depths of my mind were calm, but on the surface I was panicking and agitated. Calm down, Kaichi. What happened to your usual calm self? Come on now. Do like you always do. Throw your head back and take a deep breath. Come yeah, on. Once. Twice. Breathe deeply. Calm down. Calm down. I chanted that over and over in my head and relaxed. This is a good technique for people who hy hyperventilate as well at any point. Just grab a bag, breathe deeply a couple of times, and you should be fine again. Colour came back to my vision, and smells reinfused the air. At the same time, I remembered what happened when I blacked out. Oh God. Rena and Mion had attacked me. They were about to inject me with whatever caused the same symptoms as tomataki -san. But right before that happened, I fought back. I twisted my whole body and threw Rena as she was pinning my arms. Then I followed through with my spin and rammed my foot as hard as I could into Mion's torso. It was soft. Rena tried jumping on me, so I tackled her as hard as I could and slammed her against the wall. I didn't let that brief moment of having them off balance slip by. Satoshi's bat that was left carelessly by the side of my desk. Weep. At that moment, everything went pitch black. 
There's nothing recorded past this point in the videotape in my mind. No, that wasn't right. It wasn't that there was nothing recorded. It was recorded just fine. Just... The other me inside myself had told me not to look and had turned off the TV. Just because the screen had gone black and I couldn't see it, didn't mean that the videotape within me hadn't recorded it. The TV was just off, the video was still playing. The tape within me, creaking along, still playing. On the other end of that pitch black screen, that horrifying video was still playing on. It's the ring! She's coming to get him. Compared to this though, this, the scene right before my eyes, was still so difficult to take in. There's blood splattered everywhere on the walls, the two of them in these unnatural poses. Not a sign of movement from them. I couldn't even tell if they were breathing. No matter what the circumstances were, my friends, these girls, I had, I had attacked them. I may have even killed them. But if I hadn't done this, I would have been the one done for. Balancing that out on an imaginary scale, it felt odd that I'd even felt bad about it. Even if it was a bit excessive, this was justifiable self-defense. The proof was all here. The two of them collapsed here in Mion Syringe. Mion Syringe filled with some unknown drug would certainly solve the mystery surrounding the incident with Tomitaki-san. And from the fact that both of these two were involved, they'd be able to pick up the criminals one after the other. Still, I might be suspected for this, but that was just fine. Anyway, now there should be a police affair. This won't fade into the darkness like Rena's past incidents. As long as the police were involved, that should bring this to a close. They'd probably revisit their investigation on the chain of events. Oishi-san would definitely get to the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Meaning, my wish, of not wanting to die, of wanting to know the truth, that would be fulfilled in its most basic form. It was all a matter of time now. The Dr. Renner called should be getting here soon. And the manager. I'll confess everything to him. I needed to contact Oishi-san. At that moment, I remembered. Besides the doctor, a manager had been called. Exactly. It was easy to imagine that there was someone deeply involved with the incidents, judging from Rena and Mion's conversation. The ache in my chest, caused by the gruesome deed I'd done, dissipated rapidly. It was not over yet. This place was no longer safe. Stay calm, Kaichi Maibara. It's not over yet. I needed to live long enough to tell the police of this incident. At that moment, I felt like I heard someone's voice from outside. Since people were speaking, it must mean there was more than one person. I moved the curtain ever so slightly and peered outside. It was a bizarre sight. About four or five grown men were all gathered at the gate. They very much resembled the two men who had assaulted me at the dam site today. Those two might even be among them. There was one person there wearing a white coat, but he didn't look like a doctor at all. My gut told me he was in disguise, only posing as a doctor. That guy would probably ring the bell and get me to open the front door. Pretend to be a doctor to get me to open the door, and then the rest of them would all rush in at once. At that moment, I saw the car parked behind the men, and my heart nearly skipped the beat. The white van. No mistaking it. That van, the one that had tried to run me down. The man in the white coat entered the gate and headed towards the front door. The rest of the men hid in the bushes and watched him. How suspicious. I probably couldn't pretend that I wasn't home. Undoubtedly, they'd just break the window and enter. I needed to get out of here somehow. Then, use a public phone to contact Uishi. Then meet up somewhere. First of all, I need a weapon. Then shoes! But before that, there was one thing that I had to do. I had no intention of dying. I'd live and reveal the truth about this nonsensical curse for Yoshio Sama. But, what would happen from here on, regardless of how determined I was, may bring about my demise. And that was why. There was one thing more important than getting out of here right now. I need to get that clock out quickly and take down the note hidden behind it. Damn it! The tape was sticking to it fast. It'd be fine if it was torn a little. I opened up the slightly torn note and began writing another passage with a ballpoint pen. If I wasn't able to inform Oishi, then the only thing I could rely on was this note. I'd never thought a piece of torn, college-ruled notebook paper could be this reliable before. I had no time. I'd only write what I knew right now. I needed to leave some sort of information that would lead them, lead them to uncover the truth. Rena and Mion are conspirators of the perpetrators. This was an undeniable fact. I still didn't want to believe it, but it was a fact. Anyway, I'd leave all the information that would help lead them to finding the perpetrators. 
There are four or five adults, maybe more. They have a white van. This was everything I was able to see from the window. There may be more. Also, there was that unidentifiable person known as the manager. To begin with, the term manager didn't even mesh with Hinnam's hour at all. If they were going to include the managers from the past incidents, then the only one is the construction foreman, the victim from the first murder, the very first victim in the chain of incidents. Killed in a lynching, his body divided into six pieces. His right arm was never discovered. The police should have confirmed that death. But Renner and Mion did both call him manager. They said, manager. They wouldn't use that term to refer to someone who was dead. The police would never even co conceive that someone who was deceased could be involved. Could that be some sort of oversight? I didn't know. But even if I didn't know, it could be a big hint for uishi -san. That's right. They needed to start fresh from the first incident. It wasn't just a simple dismemberment, but the start of the string of mysterious deaths that would follow. So then, there must be something hidden there. Please reinvestigate the victim from the dismemberment incident. He's alive. His death should have been established after an autopsy. Logically, you'd think as much. But was that really the case? Could it have been some sort of ploy that they were able to deceive the police with? I shouldn't jump to conclusions, but he may still be alive. I had no time to ponder that right now. Oh yeah, there's something even more important I needed to write. tomataki -san's death was from an unknown drug. That's right. That drug, it was an irreplaceable piece of evidence. No doubt, just by having this, everything would be uncovered. I couldn't just leave that vital clue lying on the floor. The syringe is proof. Writing that down, I stuck the syringe onto the back of the clock with plenty of tape, so it absolutely would not slip out and fall to the floor. Firmly. Firmly. Oop, Doc's arrived. <laughs> the bell rang. They were here. I couldn't write anymore. But even still, there was one last thing that I had to write. I have no idea why it's become like this. This may be the closest thing to the truth out of everything I wrote on this note. If you are reading this, then I'm probably already dead. Though you may or may not find my body. If I was going to write out everything that could happen, either dying from the curse, or being demoned away. You who are reading this, please uncover the truth. That is my only desire. With this, my last will and testament was complete. It wasn't certain that I was going to die, but it was my final plea. Just in case. I folded the note, stuck it back onto the back of the clock, and returned the clock back to its usual spot. Let me have a drink a sec. Sorry. I couldn't help but pray. Ushi-san, if something happens to me, I leave the rest to you. After that, they gazed down silently at Renner and Mion. This was probably the last time we'd ever see each other. Well, they're not seeing you. <laughs> Renner, Mion. I really had thought. All of us were friends. But why did it end up like this? I never had any fun in my previous school. I only worried about standardised test scores, but if the school I hoped to get into was where I really wanted to go, or a safety net, that was all I talked about. But it was a dull life. The people I called friends were also my rivals in studying, in competitions, in personal records, and standardised test scores. Everyone here taught me how unhealthy that lifestyle was. This month was really fun. Making a fuss over lunch, making a fuss over the club, making a fuss over the festival. Something hot began dripping from my face. Uncontrollable tears. I should have had no obligation to shed tears for them, but they wouldn't stop. Even if they were after my life, even if they were trying to kill me, everything that happened this month, I wouldn't forget it. Or could it be those happy days were all a facade, facade as well? Was it all a trap? meticulously orchestrated up until today to ensnare me? Could it have been that I just arbitrarily assumed that they were my friends? That couldn't have been the case. Both Renna and Mion, they really were my friends. Those happy days, there was nothing fake or unclear about them. Someone probably forced them to try to kill me. Or their minds were taken over, possessed by the supernatural entity known as Oishi Osama. Regardless, both Renna and Mion, they were the best friends ever. And, when they were coming after me, it wasn't of their own volition. Wait, they weren't the kind of people to sell off their friends, regardless of whether or not they were forced. There's no way such a thing like being possessed by Oshiro sama could happen in reality. Then, did the real Renna and Mion come after me? What was I thinking? What a silly dumb idea. Having beaten down both Renna and Mion, I was still debating if they were the real ones or fakes. There was no real or fake. Only the reality that was before me. Renna and Mion were sprawled out at my feet. That was the only truth. I was only trying. 
trying to twist the facts to my benefit that I had beaten my friends to death. No matter how I spun it, it wouldn't change reality. Renna and Mion were both dead. It felt like there was a crack in the dam of strange emotions that was holding back. It felt like my calm state, which was nothing more than a bluff, had receded, and in, in that opening, insanity was leaking out. I killed them. I killed them. Renna and Mion. I killed them. The doorbell rang again. The unrelenting echo pulled me back into a state of composure once again. I didn't have a moment to spare. Quickly, I needed to get away. I didn't want to die. I would uncover everything after that. The identity of whoever or whatever had pushed me this far. Even if I had to drink mud and eat grass, I would survive. I would survive. I would definitely survive. <laughs> I killed Rana for that very reason. I also killed me on. I went that far just to keep living. So I can't die. For my sake and for the sake of the late Renner and Mion, I have to survive. I think he wants to survive. I ran towards the door and grabbed my shoes. The doorbell rang again as if to urge Mion. Behind this single solitary door, they were there. Keeping quiet, I headed towards the kitchen. Headed towards the back door. Before opening the back door, I put my ear to it and checked for people outside. No one. After I put on my shoes, I opened the door slowly so as to not make a sound. There he is, the back door. The piercing voice echoed out. That voice stabbed through me, setting my hair on end. I had to run. Get out of here, Keiichi. One after the other, I felt stuff like rationale and intelligence, those things you use when I have time to spare, spill out of me. I didn't feel any pain from the branches scratching my arms and forehead. My autonomously pulsing heart also felt neither fatigue nor pain. My entire being just wished to live. There was nothing else it desired. It probably had no complaints whatsoever. So of course I wouldn't feel fatigue. I just ran, just recklessly rushing in the direction I was already heading. Even if nobody was chasing after me, I'd still be running like this. There wasn't a thought in my mind about where I was headed. Turning around, I felt a presence right next to me. That presence was, without a doubt, chasing me like my shadow. If I took even one misstep, I would be devoured. That's what I thought. So I didn't turn around. I didn't stop. I ran. At full speed. Where's he running to? Quack, quack. <laughs> what the hell's that? That was the chirping of the Higurashi. Oh, okay. Tell me it was evening. Trying to tell me something, and then I finally heard it. The wailing cry of the victims who didn't make it. Would I be joining them? Mm -mm. Only the Higurashi knew. They knew everything. They definitely knew. Okay, Kaichi. Okay. <laughs> So I ran towards where I could hear more of the Higurashi's chirps. But the farther I ran, the farther away their chirping became. I couldn't get near them. Why are you all running away? Was it my fault? Was I the one to blame? Then I'll apologise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh lord, he's turning to Rena. He's definitely sorry. I felt that only the Higurashi knew. Oh, is it going to end it there? It's more coming. I think we'll just carry on, do you think? I think this is the very end anyway. I think it's ending differently to the anime. The smoking room was filled with a cloud of cigarette smoke. The expensive smoke filter gave off some crackling electric noise, but it didn't seem like it was doing anything at all. Why did the smokers have to be shoved so far down this corridor where the sun didn't even reach? I recalled hearing that the tax revenue from tobacco was about a tenth of the municipality's revenue. We were the most heavily taxed members of this mun municipality, so I really wish they'd show us a little more respect. Uh, okay, I don't want to know about this right now. <laughs> want to know about Keiichi? Why would you discard the five manzu there? It's just decreasing your options. One of the younger detectives was having a steering contest with a Mahjong magazine called Next Turn. It's still in tempo if you cut the five manzu. If you're betting on a high tie, then shouldn't you be going into it with the mangan? <laughs> I have no idea about all this stuff. Come Chan, look at the pond. They all discarded the five manzu. It's a safe tile. You'd hate it if, at end game, someone was sitting on tempo on the last turn, wouldn't you? The kid let out another groan, put out a cigarette, then took out another one. I just don't agree. Why would you reduce your own options? By the way, you can't call Ron with your winning tile in that high tie. Why's that? 
Just then, I heard a voice coming from down the hall. You hear, Oshisan? You have a call from a civilian. Oh, it is ending the same way. Sort of. Isn't that something? Well, see you soon. It's time for Kaichi to phone Uishi, trying to get help from the last possible place he knows. Why can't he call Vaughn on it? Hold on for a second, Uishi-san. The man sitting in the seat Uishi-san was heading towards waved at the telephone receiver. Outside line, from a payphone. Oh, why, thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting, this is Uishi. Who is it? Ah, Uishi-san. Hello. If it isn't my Bawa-san, why, good evening. From the tone of my Bawa-kun's voice, I already knew he was in a predicament. This was the first time my Bawa-kun had phoned me, and he was calling from a payphone. Please calm down. Did something happen? Uh, well, yeah, I killed a couple of my mates. <laughs> his voice was erratic over the line. He completely lost his sense of composure. After checking that nobody else could hear, I prompted him in a hushed tone. What happened? Um, I... Calm down, my bar son. I can have the local officers head to your location. I'll be there soon, too. Ah, um, I think that's... Impossible. His voice was quivering and hoarse. He wasn't surrounded by people, even as he was making this call, was he? Hmm, surrounded by someone, he thinks. My bar son, you're calling from a payphone right now, right? Where's that payphone? There were no other sounds besides my Barakun's voice. It had to be a phone booth. I scratched out a note and thrust it at my colleague sitting across from me. Hinamazawa, phone booth. He understood quickly and hastily started on the internal lines. Calm down, my Barasan. What is your current situation? It usually wasn't a good idea to tell someone panicking to do so, but this was not a usual case. My Barakun didn't just get in trouble, get away, and then call me. He was in the midst of something dangerous right now. But... Yelling at my Barakun right now would just needlessly cause him to be even more frantic. My Barakun wasn't just calling to seek help. He was trying to tell us something more than that. And whatever that was, if I didn't get it from this call, I was certain there would never be another chance. My colleague pushed a note in front of me. There's only one booth in Hinamazawa. A patrol car is on the way. Five minutes. That's too long. How many officers are in there? Two. Not enough. First, as I imagined, there were likely quite a few people surrounding my barracon. Yeah, there were like five or six, wasn't there? Five minutes was too long. Did you call the officer stationed in Hinamazawa? He's scheduled to be on patrol. They're currently out and it'll be impossible to contact them. God damn. <laughs> Come chan bring the car around. Understood. Hello, Uchi-san? Hello. It's alright. I can hear you loud and clear. There was something wrong with my barracon. That was not a normal coughing sound. Vomiting? Or was it blood? Had he already been attacked? Was he injured? My bow san The police are on their way. They'll be there in a couple of minutes, so hold on somehow. Hello? Can you hear me? I could hear on the other end of the line that he was having a coughing fit. The worst possible situation popped into my head. My bow san Who is the culprit? How many are they? I... I thought... At first the culprit was human. I can tell if that was a cough or vomiting. You are right, my Bao-san. I thought that the culprit was a person and not Ayushiro Sama's curse up until right now. But I guess in the end there was an intense bout of coughing, then vomiting. But I guess Ayushiro Sama does exist. No, he's here. My Bao-san, please, just please calm down. I've been thinking it was strange for a while now. It's been following me this whole time. I run and run and run and run. But it just sticks to me like my shadow. It's slowly, so slowly, it's digging itself into my back. My Barasan. Are they, right now, perhaps, right behind you? Behind me, right behind me. Please, my Barasan. I can tell you're scared. But please, who is it that's right behind you? I can't just look behind me. If I do, I'll... I understand that you're scared, but please tell me. You just need to turn around a bit. Who is it? Who is behind you? But after I said that, I could hear him vomiting intensely. What followed was a nightmarish sound. My Barasan, it couldn't be that you're... clawing up your own throat. There was no answer. But I could hear something like scratching. There was a bang as if something was being hit. My Barasan had probably dropped the receiver. I could hear groaning and vomiting over on the other end, and a repeating abnormal noise. Hello? Hello? My Barasan? I knew how far away my voice would sound on the other end, but I couldn't help but shout. That moment I heard whispering coming from the other end. I couldn't tell what he was saying. 
from the way he was saying it, was he talking to himself? Or was he talking to someone there? Hello, my Barzan? Rather than whispering, it was some kind of mantra he was chanting over and over. I focused my senses, trying to pick up what he was saying. What was he repeating? What exactly? Beep. Suddenly the line went dead. Did he use up his time? It was because it was a payphone. Ah, it was because it cut out so abruptly. The last thing he said came out so clearly in my mind. Oshisan, the car is good to go. It was, I'm sorry. Oshisan? That's what he was repeating over and over. He said, I'm sorry. He's feeling guilty about murder now and um, everything else. I had a gut feeling. There's no longer a need to hurry. I could hear the chirp of the Higurashi spilling in from the open window. I should have been able to hear them this entire time. I just wasn't paying any attention. Why did I focus on them all of a sudden? Were they trying to tell me something? Only the Higurashi knew. That's how I felt. My bar said that too, funny enough. July 1983. Okay, we're going into the future now. In Hinamazawa, oh, whatever, you know what I mean. In Hinamazawa, a remote village near Shishibone City, there was a murder involving two female students. Oh no, it went, it skipped ahead. The suspect called over his two female classmates, Rena, Mion, to his house and beat them to death with a metal bat. This is what really happened now. The scene of the crime was the suspect's room on the second floor of his house. The inside of the room was covered with a significant quantity of splattered blood, and there were signs of a struggle with the victims. In addition to the scene of the crime, the entryway, living room, and kitchen all had traces of a struggle. That was when they were trying to get him. At the entryway, the shoe rack and wall had evidence of being impacted by a strong blunt force. That was from the night before. It's believed to have been the same bat as the murder weapon. Having no traces of blood, it's believed that the destruction occurred before the murders. Is the possibility that the suspect overpowered his victims to keep them from fleeing. In the living room, the rug had been pulled back, then thrown aside. Hard to believe that this had a connection to a struggle with the victims, and thus the reason for this remains unknown. To find the sewing needle. I think. In the kitchen, the garbage bag was torn apart, and its contents were spread out on the floor. Garbage was strewn about in the surrounding area, and handprints believed to belong to the suspect were discovered still for the soul needle. It's believed that the suspect had for some reason taken out the garbage and struck it with his fists. The reason for this remains unknown. Hmm. In addition, there was a note stuck to the fridge. The words, was there a needle, were written on it. The meaning behind this remains unclear. Just in case, garbage was searched but a needle was not discovered. So the garbage door was functional. It had been left open ever since the suspect moved in. The garage door was found closed. The suspect's fingerprints were discovered on the garage door. The reason behind this remains unknown. He went out and tried to remove all the traces, didn't he? The suspect fled the scene of the crime. However, a patrolling officer, Hinamazawa local PD, found the suspect collapsed inside a phone booth. At the time of discovery, the suspect was unconscious in critical condition. He was rushed to the local hospital for treatment but did not regain consciousness and died 24 hours later. So Kaichi died as well. The results of the autopsy indicate the immediate cause of death to have been hypervolemic shock. It was determined that the suspect had clawed at his own throat with his fingernails, and the resulting bleeding caused his death. With a similarity to the death of Tamataki-san the prior week, please believe there to be a connection and have opened an investigation. However, due to the wishes of the local authorities, it will be a confidential investigation. Due to the abnormal nature of the death, it was suspected that drugs were involved. But as with Tomotaki-san, no traces were found. What prompted all this remains inexplicable. As such, this case has been treated as an act committed on impulse. However, with several accounts of the suspect's bizarre behaviour leading up to the incident, it's possible that this was premeditated. Separated from his group of friends, isolation, inexplicable behaviour, several days before the incident, the suspect began carrying around a metal bat. The suspect was observed displaying aggressive behaviour as well as talking to himself at school. His classmates have actually heard portions of what he was saying. Two days before the incident, the suspect declared to his parents the possibility of his death. Due to these circumstances, the police have begun an investigation on the possibility that this crime was not committed on impulse, but was instead planned several days in advance. 
afterwards. The note was found in the suspect's room that he had written himself. The note was written on two sheets from a B5 college ruled notebook that had each been torn in half, and as if trying to conceal it was stuck hidden behind a clock on the wall. The contents <coughs> was written in the uh, yeah, appendix. We've already read it anyway. The police believe it to be strongly related to the incident. The police changed their line of investigation based on the possibility that the suspect was involved in some sort of incident himself. However, no further clues were found, casting doubt on the credibility of the note. Was the crime impulsive or premeditated? With the situation unclear and no further developments, the case has been labelled as unresolved. Ooh. However, the following year, suspicion arose regarding the nature of the note. The note was not written on two halves of B5 paper from two separate sheets. It was originally a single sheet. Does, does that matter? In order to erase several lines from the middle, someone had torn them out. Ah, uh, I see. Judging from the size of the letters, the missing section is estimated to be two or three lines. It's highly possible that the person who eliminated the lines in question is not the suspect. In addition, judging from traces of large quantities of cellophane tape being stuck to the back of the clock, speculation that something other than the note was stuck there has arisen. That was the syringe. The person who first discovered the crime was a detective rumoured to have a connection with the incident, Kuraudu Oishi. He underwent voluntary questioning, but denies involvement in any damages to the note. The Suspect's Note I cage you my bar, I'm in fear for my life. I do not know why they are after my life. The only thing I do know is that it has to do with Oyashiro Sama's curse. Rena and Mion are conspirators of the perpetrators. There are four or five adults, maybe more. They have a white van. This is all in the first sheet. Everything below this has been ripped out. This is from the second sheet. Yep. I have no idea why it has become like this. If you're reading this, then I'm probably already dead. Though the only difference may be the presence or lack of a body. You who are reading this, please uncover the truth. So the bit that's missing is the bit about him saying that they're real in it. Or Shiro Sama, or something like that. That's my only desire. Keichi Mayabara. Wow! <laughs> that was such a good ending, and it was pretty similar to the anime actually. It just did it a bit differently, showing it from Oishi's side instead of Mayabara's. I think in the anime it shows it from Mayabara's and Oishi's side. New scenario has been unlocked. All cast review sections has become available. To play it, select extra on the title menu and then play. pick the all cast review session. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. But I want to get the achievements, so I'm going to check it out. And I'll tell you what, I'll make a bonus episode of it. If you want to check it out, then it's up to you. But for now, I'll count this as the end of the series because, you know, it sort of... It pretty much is. It's the end of the main story anyway. But anyway... I hope you've enjoyed this series. It's been a bit different, I know. It's been longer than I thought it would be, actually. In the anime, it's only four episodes long at about, you know, 25 to 30 minutes each. And in the manga, it's two really thin volumes for this arc. So this is the longest way to experience it. And it's got a lot of filler and repetitiveness in this visual novel version that isn't in the anime or the manga. So I would actually recommend the anime more, even if the artwork of the anime isn't amazing it's got all the story and is just the best way to experience it in my opinion although the manga would be the shortest way if you just skim through quick kind of thing so anyway this has been Greeny XI. hope you've enjoyed this series like i said there'll be a bonus episode coming with the all staff review thing i'm not sure what that is exactly but and then there'll be another series starting which is going to be exciting because it's going to be another blind one, but more like a game. We're going back to games instead of like books. I will be doing the other arcs of this series, by the way. Uh, this series will end up over 100 episodes long, I'm sure. It'll be long by the end of it. But I don't think the next arc will be out on Steam for quite a while. I haven't seen anything of it, and I can't. I've tried Googling, but I can't find when it'll be out. So it might be a long way off yet before we come back to this, if you are interested. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again. In a bit, folks.